Christmas, Christmas time is here, and Christmas songs you love to hear. Thoughts of joy and hope and cheer, but mostly shopping, shopping, shopping. Christmas, Christmas time is here, the sleigh bells and the red-nosed deer. Songs and songs we love to hear, all played a thousand times each year. Heard this same song twenty times, and it's only hot. Welcome back to the shop, and here we are. Another year is almost gone, and the holiday season's upon us, which puts me squarely back at my lathe. Every year, I tell myself that I won't be turning any more pins, and every year I end up turning 30, 40, 60 more pins. Um, this year, I'm certainly still turning pins, not nearly as much in the past years, I think probably only about 20 or 30 or so. Um, but I wanted to do a few extra things. Um, my family, whether you call it a recession or not, um, or just a desire to kind of move away from the material side of things, we kind of pledged not to give each other any stuff. We're more focused on like tickets to a show, or in my case, uh, woodworking classes and things like that. Um, but people like to open stuff, and certainly you can put a pair of Broadway show tickets in a box and have somebody open it. I wanted to just do a couple of really small things so that I don't break the rules. And um, my, my wife's family is basically all women. Other than my father-in-law, it's a bunch of women. So, um, and then of course, my mom and my sisters-in-laws and things like that. So I decided I would get one of these little compact mirror kits that you can pick up at um, Penn State Industries or wood um, craft supplies, any of the kind of wood turning houses. This actually came from Penn State Industries. Um, it's just a little uh, pewter plated compact mirror. Opens up with uh, two mirrors inside. One's a, a magnifying mirror and the other is just a regular mirror. And it's set so that you can put a piece of hardwood inset into this circle. And this is such a small canvas to play with this is the time when you want to use that crazy, crazy exotic figured wood. And I've had this block of Ambonia Burl floating around for just this type of project. What I'm, what's really great about this project is it only requires uh, a blank that's a quarter of an inch thick. So I went in over to my bandsaw and resawed off um, a heavy quarter inch thick piece. And then I ended up, uh, this is actually the, the second slice, I ended up cutting it from there into small little little wafers and kind of rounded off the corners so I've got these little kind of octagonal pieces and when you buy this this kit you need to make sure you also buy the mandrel much like buying a pin mandrel and what you get <clears throat> is this little circle the diameter is the exact diameter of the inlaid hole and this post that you can fit into a Jacobs drill press chuck in your lathe all you do is take your piece and using double stick tape, you attach it to the face of the mandrel. Now you do need to make sure you've got a flat face to, mit, to mesh against the flat mandrel face. And what I do is put two pieces of double stick tape on both sides of it and then I'll stick it in a machinist vise and really press it and um, let, the, let the tape really kind of activate and let it sit there for a little bit. And then you just stick it in your Jacobs chuck, tighten the thing down and you're ready to turn. Um, so uh, let's come over to the lathe and I'll give you a close up here. Should take us maybe a minute or two to turn this to the shape we want and we can attach it to the mirror. So you can very quickly make five, six, seven of these. Uh, these little mirror kits uh, run anywhere from like $5 up until there's some, some nicer 24 karat gold ones that are in the $7 range, I think. Um, I don't honestly remember what I paid for the mandrel. Um, probably a couple bucks, maybe five bucks, we'll say. So you can get quite a few of these, give them to everybody in your family, and you know, spend less than 50 bucks for the whole deal. Um, so let's get started. So you can see I've got my Jacob's Chuck slid into the headstock, and the mandrel comes right in here and tightens up, and this is just attached with double stick tape. Of course, as always, spin it a couple times, make sure it clears your rest. Got the speed set to about 1200 RPMs. What I want to do is just bring this edge down so that it's just about flush with the edge of the mandrel.
Okay, I'm close enough that I can feel comfortable sanding it flush once we get the, the final shape done. Now I actually want to work, just kind of very lightly work off the corner. A very light touch is needed here because whether you realize it or not, as you turn this corner, you're putting significant amount of pressure this way on this mandrel and it's only double stick tape holding it there. So if you try to come in and take a really kind of deep cut, it's going to just rip it right off the blank. The torque on the tape is going to do it. So very, very light cuts and just kind of slowly round down this corner. I'm almost looking to create kind of a hollow in the middle here. As you turn the corner, you will let me get a wider shot here. As you turn this corner, you're going to swing this hand around to make sure you're continually riding the bevel. You're also going to lift the handle up in order to make sure that you are riding the bevel and keeping it engaged. However, as you lift the tool handle up, you'll tend to want to as you lift the handle up, you'll tend to want to engage the side cutting edge. And as soon as that happens, you're going to get a catch and it's going to probably tear the whole thing loose. So as you lift the handle up and you begin to engage this, you actually have to roll the flute towards you to continue to stay on that bevel. So it's, it's moving back and forth along the x-axis, moving up and down on the y-axis, and then turning on what we'll call the z-axis. All at the same time, just to keep the same spot on the bevel riding on the work. in just a little bit. Now I'm going to come back and remove just a little bit of the diameter again, get closer to the final dimension. Now repeat the same process, just slowly remove the corner. It's a good consistent pass. So I want to keep working that. You can see I've still got a little bit of a flat here on the edge. I want to take a couple more consistent passes like that until I've got a much narrower flat and then I'll finally remove that flat by sanding. Okay, I like that shape. It's got a really nice taper. Um, and you can see right at the... Let's see if I can position it. If you can see that, right at the very edge, you've got just a little bit of kind of tear out. I mean, that's going to be typical in a burl like this. But you can see our, why I left it just a little bit proud of this mandrel. Now I can come back with sandpaper, and I've got a very thin edge here, so it'll take just a light touch with maybe some 220 sandpaper to flush it up with the edge of the mandrel, and then clean up the face. And I'll start with 220 grit, just work the edge.
like that, I'm flush, perfectly flush around the edge of the mandrel. Switch over to 320 grit. Four hundred grit. Just get some shavings here and kind of burnish the surface. I'm going to come back with U um, Butte polishes, Triple E Ultra Shine. Just the littlest bit right on an end of a, of a shop towel here. And just rub it into the surface. This triple E polish, what they say is it actually will triple the latest, the last grit that you used. So my last grit was 400. So ideally, this is taking it to 1,200 grit. You can certainly go higher, but with a dense grain burl like this, it polishes up so nicely at 400 grit, I just don't see the need. Get myself a fresh edge. You see I've got a really nice shine there. <clears throat> I'm going to come back with more U-Boot polishes. Shallow Wax. This is the liquid version of it rather than the cream. Uh, really, I haven't seen too much difference in the two products. Little dollop on there. Rub it into the surface. And work it into the wood. Little pressure till you feel some heat. Then I come back and I get a clean surface and just buff it. And that finishes it off to a highly mirrored polish. There we go. Now the hard part is, I've got to actually remove it from the mandrel without damaging the piece. Ideally, I can just push it with my thumb until I can get a finger under this exposed edge and lift up. And it pops right off and we're ready to install it. So insulation is probably the simplest part of this whole process. Just take some medium thickness CA glue and I'll just drop a little section in the center. Go very light on this because you've got a flat surface here that's going to quickly spread out and cover the whole surface. Drop it right in the center. Just kind of work it around a little bit. Press it down. Until it cures with the CA glue, it's doesn't take long. A lot of times I'll kind of twist it a little bit. You could always put a little bit of activator on the, the wood side of this thing. And that's it. Our Amboinia Burl inlaid compact mirror. I think you'll find that no matter who you give it to, they'll be very, very happy. And it's a great opportunity to show off that really, really crazily figured wood and a nice small palette. So if it's the night before Christmas and all through the house, only the lathe is turning, then these are the projects for you. If you run into that instance where you need that last minute hostess gift or you need a little stocking stuffer and you just are out of time, five minutes and you've got one of these beautiful little compact mirrors, 
Um, you can make a whole bunch of them out of just a tiny little slice of wood. Um, one little slice of wood from this block of Mabonia Burl yield, yielded six of these little compact mirrors. So, great deal and good luck to you guys. Hope all of your Christmas projects get done on time and hope everybody's really happy with them. Merry Christmas. Thank you for a wonderful 2010 and maybe we'll see you before the new year. If not, Happy New Year.